one thing I would like to say is say thank you. Uh, we're all trying to figure out how to navigate this new uh, this new reality. Um, these webinars are. Um, I'm taking a, a, a lead from our partners in, in Germany and in Cologne, the Pandora team. They've, they've started doing daily seminars, so I'll give them a little shout out. Um, you can watch the uh, Facebook Christy video, uh, Christy video Processors page um, directly, and you should see they should be posting their schedule uh, on, a, on pretty much a daily basis. Um, I'm going to be joined uh, by uh, or joined with Joel Terensky. Um, we were going to have Jason on here as well. Sorry, Jason. Um, but uh, he'll be here kind of helping. Uh, with, yeah, there's, there's, there's Joel. Okay. Um, so there'll be a, a mechanism to ask questions uh, through, the, through the webinar uh, uh, tools there. Uh, Joel's going to try to help me uh, grab some and then reply to all. Uh, just keep that in mind uh, since this is kind of everybody's, everybody else is muted and this is more of a, of a, of a, of a lecture of sorts. Um, so just keep that in mind. <clears throat> like I said, I saw the, the registration list. I saw lots of familiar names. Um, this is meant since this was went beyond just our Facebook user group. Uh, it is being uh, offered to pretty much anybody. We send it to our sales team. They send it to all our dealers and to all our partners, uh, to our end user customers. So everything is out there. So it's going to be a very, this first one is going to be very, <laughs> very, uh, general in nature. So keep that in mind. Um, and I'll try to temper my speech uh, and, and my, my cadence here to uh, keep everybody uh, in the loop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, both Spider products, both the X20 and the X80. Now, obviously, the X20 has been out for a decade, right? Actually, still selling those those processors brand new today. So if you anybody still want one, you can still get them depending on the on the on the capabilities and the, and the requirements of your project and or uh, needs. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start with the X20. So I'm going to go right into PowerPoint mode here. Okay. And part pardon the the goofy transitions. Uh, where did Spider come from? Well, our product came from the staging and rental market, right? The live production. Um, the original Spider 2 and 300 series uh, was really designed to edge blend multiple outputs together to create a larger, higher resolution image for uh, the audience, right? Um, at the time, I have to say that because now we're 10 years later, uh, that uh, the idea was that that image that people saw on the screen uh, that was the only place it existed, right? It didn't exist anywhere digitally. It was all carved up in different sections through different processors. Uh, Spider was one of the first to bring it all together and keep it all in one place and be able to manage all that. So staging and rental is really where uh, that product um, got off the ground, right? And that's and we can uh, again, most of the people on this on this webinar here probably know that, and that's nothing new to them. Um, that uh, you can see some of these old show pictures. Sorry, I, I'd struggled coming up with some new ones. You want to see new new show pictures? By all means, go to the Facebook group. You know, people are posting pictures about their shows all the time, so it's, you can. There's no shortage of that there. Uh, the broadcast market was another super popular area that the Spider went into because it just fit perfectly with these large set displays. Um, so you can see CNN, the Nasdaq Market Site, um, BBC, and the list goes on. There's Fox News, Fox Business. Um, MSNBC, the Today Show, I mean, all these other different shows that all kind of basically standardize on the Spider as the uh, standard video processor for their sets. Um, you can see as I go through a couple other ones here, some of these are a little dated, but they all make sense. So as I move forward, you get into the LED uh, support. So L Spider has been, again, from the beginning, a very very LED friendly, meaning it allows you to manipulate your canvas and your and your pixel spaces very, um, very creatively to be able to display video and odd resolutions and custom resolutions and things like that for LEDs. Um, going into that whole stadium market, we have gone and almost retrofitted almost every NFL stadium, several um, arenas, uh, center hounds, uh, things like the Broncos. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars, the Cardinals have gone through a couple of refreshes with Spire. They were one of our first stadium uh, customers to buy into that. Um, 
And then you get other corporate areas. Um, again, some of these photos are a little dated, but they, you get the idea. Anywhere there was a need for high resolution uh, displays, uh, and again, you'll see that there's all kinds of expansion options as well for these things. So keep in mind that you have all of these different markets that Spider has grown into and has been available to, and that's why we're kind of the industry leader with that respect. Um, you get into stuff that probably the staging market doesn't see as much is visualization and stereoscopic. So, you know, oil and gas, uh, medical, uh, anywhere there's a need where they need to actually get in and do that, that active or passive stereo applications. Um, where they can they can actually get in there and model things and get around and see spiders both both the, sport, the spider x20 and the x80 support stereoscopic modes and if, um, we'll, if you need more details on that we can also you can also just reach out to me directly and i can help you out with that um command and control um <laughs> this is something where we have a couple of other products that actually work really well with this but in the right in the right space this could be uh, a very spider is always um very popular and mobile command centers or network operation centers or emergency operation centers. So um, it's one of those things that you just, anywhere it has a fit, uh, it's, it's, a great, it's a great option to use uh, in the command and control environment. Now, houses of worship, I'm going off an old PowerPoint slide uh, deck here. So um, churches, uh, that, was a, a, that kind of falls into that whole live production state, I always used to call it, um, because they have the ability to quickly mix and switch different uh, formats and, and resolutions, and it's all controlled in one area, okay? Um, so, a little bit more about the hardware, and I'll, I see, I'll try to slow my speech down a little bit, I apologize. Um, so, the hardware, so this is a, this is a Spider X20, um, basically a 4RU chassis, okay, for those of you that are not aware of that. Uh, 4RU chassis fits in a standard AV rack. Um, when you look at the back panel, you'll see uh, a myriad of different types of inputs and outputs. So we'll just kind of start from the top and work our way down. So you'll see that there's three card slots there. Each, the first two top card slots are, are input boards. So um, I'm not sure if this is going to convey, but if anybody can see, maybe Joel can confirm if you can see my little ping option there, that'll help direct uh, your, your, where your eyes are looking. But basically you have eight inputs per card. So we offer two configurations of the X20 and what we would call an X20 0808, meaning eight in, eight out, and, uh, or a 1608, which would basically simply add this second uh, output board. Okay, that's optional. Now you only get one, I'm sorry, second input board, but you only get one option for the output board. You only get one output board uh, in any particular chassis. But if you go through and look at these, you'll see that they alternate in their flavor. So they go from inputs one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15. Those are all the same type of video type inputs. Those are really uh, subject to uh, SEMPTE standards. And then all of the even numbered ones are all DVI-I, uh, which all basically handle pretty much any resolution, excuse me, within a certain parameter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but just to, and then you go down to the outputs, you'll see a total of eight outputs um, supporting basically analog up to, you know, analog DVI I or so A uh, with along with the SAI 3G outputs. Um, you have Gemlock over there on the far right, um, right down here. And then you have uh, power supplies, two, two power supplies, one for main, one for backup. So one's a redundant power supply. Uh, you'll also see the uh, single board computer on the back panel. Um, this is where you would connect to Ethernet. This is where you have RS-232 ports. So if you want to control upstream routers, which is one of the big things that Spider's always done in all the way, all the way back to the two and 300 series, but always control other, other manufacturers' routers. Um, and, uh, or you could provide uh, control for the Spider from systems like Crestron or AMX or things, something like that, where you wanted to do that over RS-232 as well. You'll see uh, an Ethernet port there. That's how you communicate. We'll have other uh, webinars that focus on the specific software interface, the either Christy Advanced or the Spider Studio. Those will be in future videos, but this is more kind of a focus and an overview on the, on the overall hardware. So again, to drill down on some of those inputs, these, here's you can get a little close up view. Um, those odd numbered inputs, one, three, five, so on and so forth, component video, composite video, 
3G, SDI, um, they're all there for you. Uh, on the even ones, you'll see that the DVI-I, that means it's digital or analog. Okay, these also support dual link resolutions, okay? Um, Spider is pretty much a dual, uh, X20 is a dual link box. Uh, so we can handle up to 2560 horizontal resolution for, and, and, and this is where you can get into some custom resolutions, uh, horizontal or 2160 vertical, okay? Now all of this kind of depends on the pixel clock, so you can go up to a certain amount, um, but you can't be, do 2560 by 2160, it's just too much bandwidth. Now, when you do go into, uh, when you do use a dual link signal, one thing you'll have to remember is that if I use dual link on input six right here, that effectively disables the adjacent uh, upstream input, okay? Meaning if I have a dual link uh, source coming in on input six, I lose input five, okay? If I have dual link on 12, I lose 11. If I have dual link on two, I lose one, so on and so forth. Um, it requires two input channels and it also requires two layers. So you'll have to keep that in mind uh, as you go forward if you're gonna be using dual link resolution within the X20, okay? Uh, on the output side, um, pretty much omit the composite um, and S video options there. Uh, so you basically have DVI-I or dual link DVI outputs. Uh, note that with the output side, um, four of the outputs, four, support dual link, okay? Meaning outputs one, three, I'm gonna double back to a couple slides prior here and go back to that main, the main one here. So you'll see that output, uh, outputs one, three, five, and seven are all labeled, it's a little fuzzy, but they say dual DVI. That means that those support dual link resolutions, okay? And, um, but the nice thing about that is that does not mean, unlike the inputs, that does not mean I lose another output. Okay, it just means that one, three, five, and seven support dual link, two, four, six, and eight only support single link resolutions. So you can keep that in mind. So when you think about uh, video walls, different ones, higher resolutions, you can go dual link when it makes sense, uh, or you can go single link. So here with something like these, we can do 4K, just the tradition, the, the old school version of either four channel uh, on the input side or the output side, we can do four channel, four 2Ks, um, or we can do two uh, dual link 2160 by, I'm sorry, 2048 by 2160 into two channels. Um, and even most recently within the last, I think six or eight months, maybe a year, uh, we, we, do, we also support uh, UHD at 30 on the output side as well. That is a dual link resolution. So you'll have to use one of the odd numbered outputs. And Joel, Joel chime in if I, if I misspeak on anything here, but, um, but just keep that in mind that that is an option, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk about bandwidth and everything here in a minute and, and how much space you have in a minute uh, when we start talking about um, the next couple of slides here. Um, cool. Let's see, we have up to 153 people, that's wonderful. So here's the thing, uh, each output has uh, what I would call utility modes. Okay, so every output can drive either a program destination, meaning a single display or be part of a blend or be part of an LED wall, but you can choose any output and put it in what we call an operator monitor mode. And now you have a full program and preview uh, on top and bottom for every pixel space you have. Um, this has been a mode that's been uh, available in the, uh, X, um, the two and 300 series back when they were still in production, the X20, as well as the X80, we'll talk about that as well. Another mode, <clears throat> excuse me, is a scaled output mode. So we can take any output and scale any pixel space or create a custom pixel space and say scale this pixel space to this particular output uh, at any resolution we want. Um, it will scale down, but you just, you can basically say, all right, if you want your, your, your widescreen blend uh, to be set to a specific output, put it to a record feed, put it to a confidence monitor, um, have it double back into the control system for AMX or Crestron, so you have a summary, you, know, you can see a, a full version of it, you can loop that back out wherever you want. And these modes are available on any output of the X20. So all eight outputs support all of these modes with the exception of dual, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, one thing I forgot to mention when we started this, all of these webinars are gonna be recorded, okay? So if I seem to be speaking fast, which I apologize, I just tend to speak fast. 
Um, they will be available for you to go and rewatch uh, from either our share file site or uh, uh, one of our uh, pages on, on YouTube for the uh, Christie Digital page, okay? Um, so back to scaled outputs. So scaled outputs there. And then we have, there's one more mode right here. That's uh, not right there, sorry. My apologies, I got my slides out of order. There's one more called a source monitor where you can actually see all of your inputs coming in on any, any given system on, on your X20 uh, in real time, okay? None of those modes are really configurable. You can't change them or mess them around. Uh, they're all kind of pre-configured, um, but very, very useful either way. Now, for secure installations, um, we offer a remote CPU option. So when volatile memory, non-volatile memory becomes an issue, if people don't want you to save uh, images that are, uh, on, that are stored on the spider, um, we have a remote CPU option that basically takes the server out of the box, moves it remotely with a removable hard drive. So you can have, uh, there's different classifications for, for military or government applications. You can actually uh, just swap out the CPU and then reboot the system and it goes into that particular mode. Um, redundant uh, hot swappable power supplies, um, takes one to run, the other one's redundant, okay? Auto sensing voltage, you shouldn't have to worry about any of that. So wherever you, wherever, wherever you end up sending this, the spider, it'll be fine just to plug it in. Uh, expansion. So the Spider X20, uh, the 20 refers to its canvas size. Okay. Um, I'm just realizing I skipped the slide or it's in the wrong position. Um, Spider creates a massive pixel canvas. Uh, it's 20 megapixels. Okay. Uh, it's in the form of a rectangle. Okay. Um, and that's probably on the next one down, but uh, within that rectangle, you create pixel spaces, right? So what you're seeing here below is uh, the Westgate uh, Sportsbook, which is a big parallel system, which used, goes well beyond 20 megapixels. So it's actually seven, uh, that particular wall is uh, seven or eight, I think, it, I believe it's eight, um, that it's actually driving. But within that, you create uh, multiple pixel spaces, one for, say, house left or your main screen or your downstage monitor, and every one of those gets driven by an output. Um, so if you need to go beyond eight outputs or beyond 20 megapixels, you just simply add another spider uh, and there's some configuration involved, there's some rules in, involved, but uh, it's definitely doable. We have systems with uh, up, to, up to eight X20s uh, in a single configuration where it's all managed from one interface, but you have eight of them linked together. Uh, obviously up -routed, upstream routing is, is a definite factor there. So these are all topics that I would imagine most of the people on this on this uh, webinar are, are familiar with, uh, but just understand that any kind of parallel system like that requires an upstream router that Spider controls, so it can manage what source goes to which which display. Okay. Um, stereoscopic options. We talked about that. My slides are ridiculously out of order. My apologies. And there's the source monitor coming up in the rear, right? Um, so that's not. Next slide I wanted to go to. So here's the thing. Let me look at something very quickly here. Um, bear with me. Uh, not sure if we got any questions out there yet. Um, don't see any just yet, but uh, let me know. Um, so X20. Let's uh, let's pop on through here to the X80. Okay. So X20 launched roughly 2007, 2008, um, and was huge. It was it was wonderful, right? Uh, brought together internal matrix switching for the Spider, which was a huge uh, leapfrog from the two and three hundred system, two and three hundred series systems. Um, it came with the alternate, uh, with the varying out input uh, types, which um, took a little, it was a learning curve for some people. Um, fast forward 10 years, we launched the X80, and now we have this uh, massive box. And with the X80, you can kind of understand where the name comes from. Now we have an 80 megapixel chassis, right? So now we have 80 megapixels that the system can run. Um, the configurations, Take a peek at the back panel here. This is a 6RU chassis. Um, 
it has six input board slots, okay? Uh, each input board supports four inputs. Now, so all of these come in, uh, in increments of four, and you can order these systems however you want uh, in increments of four. Uh, but every input supports HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.2, and 12G SDI, okay? Uh, so if you have a four inputs, now it's not like where if we're using one, if we're using 4K on input one, I burn the usage of, or even one and two, I burn the usage of other inputs. I get 4K on every input and at all the time. So any input, anywhere, all the time. Uh, those sources can be anywhere from standard definition up to 4K at 60, okay? And you can switch and, and mix between any of them at any time. So there's no there's no restriction with that with that case. So with that meaning, with that being said, now we have six input board slots. So that means you get up to 24 inputs, okay? Now with both products and some of these, some of these features I'm gonna talk about are, 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 are common between the two product, both X20 and X80. Good rule of thumb to remember is that however many physical inputs your system has, that's how many layers you're going to be using to, to uh, display your video. You have up to 24 layers. So if I have a fully populated system, I have 24 4K layers that can be on the screen simultaneously at any given moment. Um, the X20-1608 has 16 inputs. That means 16 layers. Okay. Um, these are regular just uh, video layers. Now, uh, you get into the staging side of things and you want mixers, right? So that's always the big thing. So a mixer requires two layers. And we'll, we'll have other webinars about how that all pans out. But the main thing to understand is that however many physical inputs I have, that's how many windows I can put on the canvas at any one given moment. So that's an important thing when you're talking with customers, you're trying to specify the spider for a specific project. One good rule, one good question we always ask is how many sources do you want to see on the screen at any one given moment, right? That's a good that's a good test to determine how many physical inputs they're gonna really, really need. Because if they say 60, <laughs> I have 60 sources, well, do you really need to see all 60 sources at once? Um, or do you just need access to those 60 sources? And I'm only gonna see eight sources at a time. Um, that way we can always utilize the matrix router upstream to warehouse all of those 60 sources and then have Spider control the router to be able to route all of those uh, sources into our eight particular inputs that we want to view on the on the displays. So keep that in mind. Okay. Moving across uh, to the center board here, this is uh, where you would find the expansion ports right here. Uh, top port is out, lower port is in. Uh, this is how we would expand systems. We'll have uh, other discussions, and you can go back and read any of the other videos that I posted about expansion within X20 and X80, and you'll, you can read all about those and get get some of the uh, all the details with that. Um, below that is the Genlock ports there as well, and as we move over to the right, we get to the outputs. Okay, so outputs basically support all the same formats: HD, HDMI 2.0. Sorry, dogs at my feet. Um, HDMI 2.0. DisplayPort 1.2 and 12G, okay? All of those formats are, are supported on every output. Now, if you do the math, you're gonna see that, uh, I'll show you, give, I have a couple diagrams here in a minute. 80 megapixels goes a long way, but it doesn't go 16 outputs ways. <laughs> so if you do the math and do say nine uh, 4K outputs in a budded configure, say you do a three wide, three tall, a three tall uh, panel array, that's going to get you right up there close to 80 megapixels, okay? That leaves, so that's using nine outputs. I've got 16 total. Well, we've got other modes that we can use those outputs in, and I'll explain some of those here shortly. So um, let's see here. Uh, output modes, yeah, so you'll see those. Uh, going down, you'll see the power supplies. There's four power supplies. It requires two to run the system, and the other two are redundant. You're looking roughly and... Uh, I may dub this out, but it's about 12 amps, um, 1,680 watts, I think is what it's specified for. So you really want to make sure you, you consider power uh, consumption um, when you're looking at circuits and things like that, okay? Uh, down on the lower left over here, you'll see um, what would look like the single board computer in the back of the X20. Uh, that's basically the same thing here. You have your serial ports for router control and or external control of the spider. Um, you've got the ethernet port, uh, right next to it for control. 
uh, as well as uh, some other ports that aren't used, like the audio ports and things like that. So uh, no audio in Spider. Uh, so let's we'll just bury that one right there. Um, I'm going to move on. Uh, just quickly swing the box around and look at the front panel. If you're familiar with the X20, I'll stop banging on this because I can see my, my camera is kind of jiggling up here. Um, front panel got a pretty good uh, facelift uh, when X20, uh, when X80 was uh, introduced. Now we have these OLED buttons that are very contextual. They open up different menus. Um, you can, you have the basic power button, but now you got a USB port right on the front. So if you need to pull a backup, uh, do a backup of the, of the file or uh, restore or open or load a configuration on Spider, you can do it without having to use, excuse me, the, uh, the, uh, the Spider Studio and or uh, Spider Studio. You can update the firmware uh, using uh, from the front panel. It no longer requires the client to do that, although you can still do it that way as well. You get um, a heads up, the, the display up there, you see IP address, input count, version, internal temperature, gen lock, all of those things are right there at your disposal. Um, there's some new settings in there for admin, for factory resets, some diagnostic tools that you can export logs and send those out as well. One of the beautiful things you can do to the next two are probably uh, old news now, but um, really big back in the day when it first came out is that you can actually set the IP address directly from the front of the uh, from the front panel. Uh, kind of a big deal if you're if you're familiar with the X20, you had to kind of remote desktop into it, but now you can do that right from the front panel. You can load test patterns to any output or pixel space directly from the front panel. Um, you can uh, select a certain number of command keys and or function keys for your favorites and put them so they're accessible from the front panel. And then there's also a lock function that can lock out the front panel and you can type in a pin, uh, a pin to access it, okay? Um, so definitely, uh, definitely an upgrade on the front panel there as well becomes uh, much more um, user friendly. Okay, so um, how does a spider work? So I, I, I saved this topic after we talked about all the hardware, but spider uses what we call a VI or a visual or visual image. This is the canvas that I was talking about. So the canvas is drawn in a rectangle. Okay, you have to think of 80 megapixels in the form of a rectangle. There's our rectangle. Now, X80 uh, runs in a couple of different bit rates, right? So we can run it either 8-bit or 12-bit. Um, that's important because it determines how many pixels you get. And what you see here is a representation, uh, the comparison of what the X20 VI capacity is versus what the X80 uh, capacity is. So if I, if, I, if I step back to the X20 for a moment, you'll see that we get that uh, 20 megapixels. There are certain limitations on how, how what the dimensions of that, of that rectangle can be. Um, the maximum vertical height of that canvas can only be 2,400 pixels for the X20, okay? I can't go beyond 2,400 pixels without adding another chassis, and then you can go another 2,400, and then it go another 2,400. But that's the limit, okay? So if I were to do a quick uh, calculate here, so if I have my canvas, um, oops, sorry, these little pop-ups. If I do 20 million divided by 2,400, that gives me 8,333 horizontal pixels by 2,400 to create pixel spaces, right? So whatever displays I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna set uh, my height to 2,400, that's the tallest I can go, that's what I can fit horizontally. Now, the nice thing about this canvas is that can, it can be adjusted. So say you don't need 2,400 pixels. Maybe you're only doing a, you know, an HD show and all your displays are 1080. So if I redo the math on this and I do 20 million divided by 1080, now I get 18 and a half thousand uh, pixels. So the rule here, and everybody's heard me in, in class, if you've ever been to one of my classes, uh, the wider the canvas is, the shorter it is, the um, the narrower it is, the taller it can be. So it's kind of a, a work in progress. So whatever you need, you can adjust the height and that will directly affect the horizontal maximum, okay? Now, going back to X80, let me just minimize that. So here at 8-bit, you get the full 80 megapixels, okay? And now the VI height, the visual image height, is now expanded up to 6480, which is basically 2160 times three, 
Okay, I'm a very handsy guy, right? So now you got 3840 or 4096 by 2160 plus 2160 plus 2160. And that's where you can get into your, your three by three array. But the same rule applies here. Who's gonna use 6480 pixels? You never know. Um, every, well, lots of people. Uh, but if you don't need that, what if you only need a UHD show? We I mean, everything's only 2160. So let me toggle my calculator back here. I'll calculate this out. Say we do 80 megapixels, right? And I divide that by what, 6480? I get 12,000 horizontal pixels, okay? If I do 80 megapixels and divide that by 2160, I get 37,000 horizontal pixels. So now that, that goes from something that's a big 16.9 uh, screen to something that's a super wide uh, LED configuration or even a blend, uh, UHD blend configuration. Okay, so you can you can play with those numbers to achieve what you need to do, but you have to stay within the 80 megapixels. So um, going from there, so that's all under 8-bit, okay? The nice thing here is that we also run at 12-bit, okay? Now there's a, there's a trade-off when you run at 12-bit. Um, the number of pixels is reduced to 53 million, okay? So 53 million pixels at 12-bit. You also reduce the vertical height. Notice that it's now been reduced to 4320, 4320, okay? Um, that's two 4Ks uh, over the top of each other, but you still also get the option to adjust the height, which will then adjust the horizontal pixel space uh, the, the horizontal canvas to uh, accommodate those uh, shorter pixel spaces that you want to use. Um, this generates typically a lot of questions, um, and I'll, I will welcome them all. Uh, you can all either hit me directly or submit them through here. Um, but uh, I know that this this concept is not a it's not a it's not a new concept by any means, but it's how our systems have run for the past 13, 14 years. So, um, so. In that, when we talked about outputs, um, there's a few different modes, right? Remember how I said you can have uh, uh, the 6480 by 12,345, um, but that leaves, that's only about nine outputs. Well, what can you do with those other uh, seven outputs? Well, when you look at this, uh, this is a single output board, and I've kind of color coded the different types of modes that you can actually do. So, um, if you have uh, a four output system, or just, let's just talk about the single output board here. You'll see in blue, normal. What is normal mode? Normal mode is any output mapped to a pixel space, right? Mapped to a, a to part of the canvas to drive part of a pixel, a pixel space. Every output in the system supports that mode, okay? Now, um, aux, okay, we call it direct aux, but aux is also available on every output. Okay, at, you, know, you can only pick one of these modes at a time, um, but every output on the system supports aux mode. And what is an aux mode? It directly and internally routes a source directly to an output, uh, which is convenient if you're gonna do, say, just hard switching, just a quick cut. The beautiful thing about this is that it will scale the source up or down based on what the resolutions are of the source and the output. So if it's a UHD source and it's going to a 1080p display, scale it down and fit it. Um, if it's an HD source going to a UHD display, it will up, it will scale it up. So that does that all internally. We have handles in the system to go ahead and do that very quickly. Uh, all the external controls there as well. So that's a very popular piece. And that's one of the lowest latency uh, modes that you can find in the Spire. Um, you'll notice the next one down is called MST, multi-stream transport. So this, um, is available on the first two ports. You'll see that on output one and two, this is just the first and second port. MST allows you to utilize, utilize DisplayPort and break a UHD signal into four separate 1080p outputs. So you could take uh, a third party um, MST product uh, out of this uh, and go take it out of the Spire and into, the, into a what product, break it into four 1080ps in any type of array four by one, three by one, two by two, so on and so forth. And now you can drive a flat panel array. So in these large LCD flat panel arrays, now you can actually say, all right, well, instead, if I have a 24 panel wall, I don't necessarily need 24 physical outputs from the spider. I can use the MST function and use a single output, 
buy a third party MST function uh, product and then break it out from there. And it still maps it into the spider as a usable pixel space using four separate outputs. So um, that's a that's a great feature if you want to drive a lot of a lot of LCDs. Okay, so I think we can go up to uh, if you have a fully populated X80 with four output card slots, uh, you can do like 36 flat panels. Um, I'd have to double check on that on the VI parameters for that, but you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> so that's available on outputs one and two. Okay. Uh, moving down to scaled output. So scaled output is just like the one that works in uh, the X20, right? You can take any pixel space and scale it to an output of whatever resolution you want, okay? That function uh, is only available on the third and fourth output, okay? So I bring, I bring uh, attention to these, to these modes because when we have people like uh, who are reselling our product to fixed installs and things like that, they may want some of these modes and they want to make sure that they can have the right functionality uh, and get the right uh, output configuration. So you can always contact sales and we'll, we'll help you walk through that process. Um, the last mode on there is called the multi-viewer. So the multi-viewer is a customizable uh, monitor that allows you to put pixel spaces, inputs or outputs. There are some um, parameters that you would need to follow um, but it is customizable. You can create different presets for that multi-viewer, uh, and maybe we may end up having a, a separate um, webinar just to talk about the multi-viewer at some point. Um, but that is only available on the last output of that card, okay? So um, when the requirement is to have two multi-viewers with different looks at simultaneously at the same time, you have to make sure that you have enough output cards in the system to support that, okay? Um, so those are those output modes. Um, and wow, I kind of blasted through that in about 35 minutes. Uh, hopefully we can uh, open this up to questions or I'll, I'll see if Joel has anything he wants to add. But, um, I, I really wanted this to be kind of a 30,000 foot overview of an introduction to the spider. Um, if you, uh, I'd be welcome to uh, seeing if anybody has any questions at this point. Um, Oh, see, oh, maybe there are. Well, no, I don't see any. Joel, do I hear you? In yeah, there? yeah. So uh, we've been having a lot of questions during the the presentation. Okay. I've been answering on the fly here. You may not be seeing them, but um, uh, we've got some some questions here. I'll just throw it to you, Peter. Uh, what options are there to switch the uh, are to switch aux function keys? Switch aux function key. So this is uh, so in the software we have an uh, we have a, an item called a function key, and it's it is a, um, a I, I call function keys like one trick ponies. They're meant to do one very specific thing. Um, a lot of these new features that we're bringing in, uh, like uh, there's one in there called backup source, um, the aux aux mode. You can go in and make these little function keys to kind of do them ind individually. So you can create multiple function keys to change the source that would route to a specific aux output, right? Um, those uh, could be done, and we, we, when we go through the Spider Studio software in future, um, in future webinars, uh, I'll definitely bring attention to that and spend, and spend some time on that. Um, but you can do those through external protocol. So if you're sending commands from Crestron or AMX or whatever, uh, or widget designer by that, for that matter, um, you can uh, send those uh, just as easy as you could if you were doing them through a function key. So I'm not sure if I answered that question. Um, yeah. um, another question with aux. Um, with the aux output of the spider, it can be sent in extreme widescreen blend. Uh, can it be sent in scale to 1080p downstage monitor, let's say? Uh, can we use the aux output as a widescreen blend? So yeah, like doing it. I, I guess you would be in ingesting as a. Um, yeah, I think I think this is a, a feature of a competitive product where you can take an internal pixel space and send it to the the aux output. Um, so, a couple of different ways to do that. You could actually physically uh, you could send a command to change the output mode from aux to scaled output to achieve that. There's a, probably a couple of different ways you can do that. Right. Um, or if you had a 
uh, an available output and an available input, you could route that output back into an input and use it as a source. And then that source could be routed and scaled anywhere it needed to go. And then from there, you could crop it and adjust it and play with all kinds of different features. Um, I think aux is a popular uh, topic. Popular to topic. Um, topic. <laughs> can we uh, monitor multiple aux mode outputs with the, within the same multi viewer? That's right now aux. Um, and I will double check this. Uh, by four, but the, the latest version of, of Studio um, and in the multi viewer doesn't show the auxes. So that's a that's a that's one thing we're we're, we're going to work on um, to be able to monitor those. Uh, you can you, you'll know that it's in that state, but uh, you won't have a view of that particular aux output. Which I know in the live event world that that would be um, a challenge. So uh, let me let me circle back on that one and I'll respond. Um, after I get some clarification. Um, we've got another question, multi-viewer naming scheme. Um, the spider has an upstream router uh, and the switch happens on the router, uh, but the input of the spider is not changed. Uh, could the name of the input window change? Could the name of the input dynamically? Um, good question. <laughs> I don't think so. Right. I don't think switches dynamically. Uh, these are, these are good questions. Uh, uh, I may have to to get a spider in here and actually have an output feed into this broadcast at some point, so we can actually see some of these modes. Uh, that's always a challenge with the multi viewer, or at least like the source monitor in X20. Um, that's that monitor is very consistent when uh, you're direct when you're directly patching a source to the input of the spider because it will never change. It will never change its position. Uh, but with an upstream router. You introduce now sources could be routed to different inputs at different times. Um, so that I know that was a, um, a question and a, sometimes a concern uh, way of being able to monitor the source when you at a glance when you look at the source monitor. Um, I will uh, I will verify to see if we have any other. Yeah, there's the lead into another question is uh, we have a question here is what do you mean by controlling a router? Um, they're they're British, so they might. Let me, let me, let me bring something up real quick. <laughs> let me uh, bear with me a second here. Uh, let me open up uh, just a quick. We'll entertain this since we have plenty of time left here. Um, this is uh, I show you a picture of. Uh, uh, whoa! Now I can't find anything on here. This is interesting. Here we go. Oh, it's because it's being hidden by that. Sorry. So controlling a router. Um, let's see here. Bear with me. I'm going to bring up a picture of uh, something that uh, is a an expansion topic. Okay, I don't know. This is maybe kind of hard to see, and it's a little generalized. But Spider, if you look at this, I have up top, I have a bunch of different video camera satellite receivers um, going into a, a matrix router, right? Um, of whatever format, whether it's SDI or HDMI or DisplayPort or whatever. Um, all those sources are going into that router's inputs. Okay, the spiders, the spiders inputs here are being fed from the matrix router's outputs. Okay. Um, that means we use the matrix of the router to route what we want into the spider when we want it. So the spider actually controls the router. The master frame will always control the router. We have about, excuse me, about 75 different protocols that we that we can control anywhere from Extron to Lightware, um, any of them, uh, well, almost any of them, um, that, are, that are already baked into the spider's protocol. So it's all in there. Um, so that way, when we set up a source, we tell it that it resides on this matrix router on input 45. And when I want to drag it on the screen, Spider will make, make sure that it sends a command to the router to say, take whatever input 46 and route it to an output that will feed the, spec the specified frame that I want to see. So um, routing, uh, this is one of the features that has been within Spider. Uh, some, of our, some of our competitors, um, control maybe their own brand. Um, but we have been supporting routers since the, 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 by necessity from the two and 300 series way back in 2004, 
four and five, right? Um, so we've just carried that, that capability over and over again. Some of our most popular features have been there since 2006, right? Uh, certain things like sending a network command out over the, over the network to a device on the system, just a basic ASCII command string, right? We've been doing that in the three of those things. Um, it's been carried over. Everybody thinks that's awesome. We should control projectors or anything that has an API. You can just control projectors, playback devices, whatever you want. Um, and it's all done internally, okay? Is that, uh, hopefully that, that helps um, alleviate some of the questions about routing. If not, we can always dedicate a webinar to it. That'll okay. be fun. Um, other question here. Um, how do you make the function keys and command keys available on the front of the X8? So I don't have a method to visu visually show you, but on if I were to go back um, to the correct slide here, oops, this one right here. There's a on here. There's a couple of them for function keys and and um, uh, function keys and command keys in the GUI. Uh, in the Spider Studio, there is a panel. You know what? Here we go. I'm just going to do it. All right. I'm just going to avoid opening up the software, but why? Um, I'll just go ahead and open this up real quick and show you how that would work. Probably keep this on tap anyway. Um, Uh, so this is just a, 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 this is actually our training room configuration. So if I were to go under tools, I'm sorry, under, where was it? View. View. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. <laughs> Panel. Right down here. So under view, these are all the panels that are accessible from the GUI right here. The ones that have a checkbox are currently visible. The ones that don't are currently hidden. But if I open this up, oops, I just closed one. I get this front panel right here. So from here, I can pick what, what items I wanna drag in there. So if I want, say, this background uh, command key in there, I just take it from here, drag it, and drop it on that button, and now it's accessible from the front panel, right? It'll, it'll automatically update. Same with function keys. Okay, I'll expand this window out a little bit. Okay, so I've got some other commands in here, as well as test patterns, right? So you can create uh, custom test patterns uh, for just a single output or, or, or be able to um, apply those to pixel spaces as well. This, uh, this front panel graphic here is not, um, uh, how do I say, if I click on that button, it won't send that command, right? So it's only to basically map what, sort, uh, what items are gonna be on the front panel. You, have, you still have to trigger them from the actual front physical front panel. But this is where you would do it, in, in the GUI when you're connected to the system. Anything else in there, Joel? Um, or is it yes. Massive so, amount? <laughs> um, got a question here from Greg Burns. The stack function keys oh, additional boy. triggers on queues within the command keys. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I don't know if that's a statement or a little more of a question. So. <laughs> oh, that makes sense from Greg. Okay. Uh, what is the highest resolution I can add on a single input of the next 80? So maximum resolution for a spider or an X80 um, is basically for a, for a factory resolution would be 4096 by 2160. Um, our EDID manager uh, allows you to create custom EDIDs and, and custom resolutions uh, that have to fall within that pixel clock um, speed, right? So we can do resolutions up to 4096 wide by 4096 tall, as long as they don't exceed the bandwidth of a single 4K signal, right? So I know that Joel's personally done uh, product, um, projects that actually have a 2160 horizontal and a 4096 vertical on both the output and the input uh, to create a native uh, uh, source and output. Um, there are some caveats where you can go beyond uh, 4096, um, we have something called a uh, feature called an 8K wide input. And I, I say that very cautiously, 8K wide input, meaning um, you can create a single input 
that would be 7680 wide by 1080 tall, right? So if you think about it, it's all still the same bandwidth of a 4K signal, um, but now you can go as wide as 7680 by 10 uh, by 1080 tall for a single input. Um, I know in past Infocoms we did uh, to show showcase that feature, we had a custom input and a, and a single MST output driving uh, a four by one array of panels right underneath our big screen there. Um, there is a caveat to that 8K wide input. Your VI height has to be, uh, a certain, it can't go beyond a certain height. And we have some documentation on that. And it's kind of a sliding scale. So you can, if you don't need 7680 and it comes in a little bit, you can go a little taller. If you're gonna need to come in more, it can go, it's gotta be a little taller and so far from there. That makes sense. And in the X, in the X20, it's basically that, uh, that dual link limit, which would be 2560, um, horizontal or 2160 vertical again without going beyond uh, those those parameters. Um, what routers are compatible for control? Nope, nope, then hold on, let me just open this up real quick. Let me go to tools, routers, and I'll just go in here and just add a Peter's router. And if I go to the router type, oh, the list isn't very big here. But you can, uh, if you download the software, which I'll, I'll provide a link if you don't already have one, um, you can actually go into the router section here and actually create a router. And you'll see you go anywhere from AJ Akumo, Altona, Autopatch, got some interesting other ones in there, Extron, Dtrivision. You can just scroll through the list, Geffen, Magic Platinum. You know, and these are ones that have been added over the years. Uh, I think when we started, in the 300 series, we had, I don't know, maybe a dozen different router protocols. And over the years, it's grown to about 75. Uh, if anybody wants um, a, a separate list of them, by all means, just uh, email me and I'll be happy to share that with you. Uh, Lightwear, Magenta. And this also actually, if I look at this right here, uh, it's under Christie, isn't it? Um, trying to find, yeah, Christie Terra. So you can actually use our Terra product as a matrix router, uh, and, the, and the and the protocol is baked into the into the Spire as well. So that's always nice if you want to um, uh, create a, a a matrix router using the Terra system. You can do that as well. Okay. Uh, you know, last minute questions. Yeah. Um, is there any cell phone apps to control the queues? Uh, not baked into our product, but we would always leverage um, Widget Designer uh, mm -hmm. for stuff like that, right? And there's third-party products out there, but we have a product that's incredibly powerful to support this type of function um, that can send commands out, um, uh, that can do any number of commands along with any number of manufacturers' products as well. So uh, as far as apps, um, not for the Spider, but again, we would, like I said, we would leverage um, uh, Pandora widget designer for uh, a solution for that as well. Um, does the Spider Studio work with X20? <laughs> well, it's just, just a matter of time before we got that question. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, so the Christie Advanced software that's been out forever um, is compatible with the Discontinued 2 and 300 series, as well as the X20 series, right? Those two, um, that, that, that software will work for either of those two. You can't combine a configuration with 300 series and X20 within that, yet yeah, they're separate. They have to be, you can't co-mingle hardware. Um, and Studio is only, uh, only, only supports uh, X8. Okay, sorry. Um, if you have a programmed, a preview program monitor, can you preview what the next queue is before you take it? Uh, yes, uh, but that comes with some training, right? So there's, uh, we'll get into that. We'll have a, um, another webinar about how you create presets and or what we call command keys. And that's, uh, that's, that's, a that's completely capable of doing that. Um, but it takes uh, a, a deeper understanding of how the system, uh, presets work, how the inputs work, how the layers work, um, but yes, there is a there is a way to preview something before it goes. Um, get into that with command keys. So if I were just to show, I can actually show this real quick. Let me just cancel this here. So if I were to go uh, and just show, say, I'm going to take this look to the screen, right? I've got a bunch of stuff. I can always preview what's going to happen next, and then take, right? 
preview, take. Um, but just to give a, a quick overview, it, it involves using something called a mixer, right, which encompasses two layers, which you have to be cautious of. So if you have a 24 input system and you wanna run everything in mixers, then that's gonna reduce the number of program layers that you're gonna be able to work with. Cause you'll see I'm using you know, one, two, uh, 12, 11, uh, 21, 22, they're all paired together so they can actually uh, load the next one and then cross fade, load the next one and then cross fade. So answer, the long answer to your short question is yes, but it takes training. Uh, keep in touch, keep watching the, uh, the, the Facebook page and the LinkedIn page for um, the class or the, the webinar on command keys and we'll go over that. Okay, I, I may have more questions here, but I'm gonna probably answer those offline. Peter? Yeah, um, sure. yeah, so yeah, we're gonna go, so we'll make this this video uh, available uh, offline, so it'll be recorded. You can go back and play, pause, rewind, do whatever you want. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and tackle the rest of those, between Joel and I, we'll, we'll tackle the rest of those questions uh, and respond in a post probably uh, through either Facebook or, or LinkedIn. Um, you guys have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to myself or the entire sales team. Uh, the email for the sales team, I. It escapes me, Joel. Uh, is it is sales at? Uh, I don't want to pull up my email right here. I'll make sure that it's posted. Um, uh, but any of you can reach out to me directly uh, uh, via my email for any questions you might have for that. Um, thanks. Keep in touch, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again on Wednesday. We're going to go through the new configuration manager for Spider uh, in a little more detail on how to configure uh, the Spider up front, and then go from there. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.